Here are five useful tips for beginners in Fire Emblem Engage. These tips are aimed at the beginning of the game through mid-game, some of them. Uh, but they're still generally useful. Some of them are universally useful. So the first tip is keep your forces together. Now, there are some times where you might want to take a small squad to attack a flank. Uh, but in this game, especially in the early game, all the way through the mid game, there's really no reason to do this. Um, there's just It's just pure risk, so you usually don't want to do that. So by keeping your forces together, if an enemy approaches you or if you're approaching a group of enemies, you can heal someone, you can body block, which is when you put a unit in front of another unit so that it can take a hit. Uh, you can just do more with more people. So you generally do not want to split up your forces. So the first tip is keep your forces together. The second tip is if you are surrounded or if you are in the center of the map, you should probably push to a flank. A flank is like the side. So right now we're in the center of this map. Uh, and I can push through this and kill this. But if these wrap around me from either side, like if the north and the south decide to wrap around me, and I push into the center, I'm now in a pincer attack. So what I would probably do on this map is kill this and see what approaches me from here while staying here and probably shift up. I would shift up because there's Pegasus Knights down here, and I can almost guarantee you that they're going to push me. I haven't played this map yet, but I can almost guarantee you that they're going to attack me because Pegasus Knights just dive in. So I would probably move my forces like this and kill this simultaneously. And you can see that these guys can't really move. So I actually can safely kind of like hold a position up here and then kill this with like three or four units. So that would be the main thing to do here. And then after these push me, I kill them, and then I could push these, kill these, and then wrap around them from a flank. The reason you want to push on flanks and not the center is in maddening mode especially, it's very easy for mounted enemy units to just find a kill. And if you're in the center, you're just giving them more opportunities to kill your units. So definitely push flanks. Okay, the third tip. So let's actually go to retry. I'm going to show you something. The third tip is do not feed Vander XP. So Vander is a pre-promoted unit. He has bad stats compared to actual promoted units. And he also just steals XP from you early on. So this is like a common noob trap in Fire Emblem games. Sometimes the pre-promote they give you is good. In this case, he's not. So I'm going to show you his stats. All right, so here he is. So look at these stats. 11 strength. So he's a pre-promoted Paladin, right? He's like a Seth or a Jagan. Uh, he has 11 defense, 8 res, 8 speed. So he's slow, his strength is not high. Now let's compare him to this unit, who is actually one of my weaker promoted units. She has higher strength, slightly less speed. Actually, I think she has higher speed. She just has a heavy sword equipped. She has better stats, though. She's not even one of my good units. So he's not even a good unit to invest in in general. He does have more health than her, but she's a different class type. Uh, what you should use him for early on is as a last resort only. And this is really for maddening mode. And In hard mode, you should be able to just have him not attack. You can unequip his weapon, so he's just like a human shield. So you can use him for pulling enemies. You just send him in, so he pulls a single enemy, then the enemies rush in, and then you kill the enemies. You just have to have your forces behind him. So you can do that. Or if in maddening as a last resort for early chapters, he can hit an enemy for some damage but he should not be killing enemies. Putting damage on enemies gives you XP. Killing enemies gives you more XP. The way XP works is the more damage you deal, the more XP you get. And if you kill an enemy, you get a bonus XP amount. So keep that in mind. Also, he doesn't get very much XP early on because he's pre-promoted. So he basically is a potential noob trap early game in that he'll just siphon XP away from your actual units that need it. And some of these units are better than, better to invest in than others early game. Uh, I can go over those really quick. This will be like a bonus tip. I'll go over that after. All right. So for the fourth tip, let's head to the Somnial. The fourth tip, I would say you want to craft like 10 rings or so really early on. And then afterwards, you want to start unlocking some skills. 
So I'll go to Somnial. So when you craft rings, you randomly get different rings with different stats. And one thing you can do if you want is you can save scum it. So save scumming is when you save the game before you do something that produces random results. Uh, so in this case, you're saving the game. You can save the game before you do crafting and then craft 10 rings and you keep doing this. You reload the save until you get good rings. So you just go to the ring chamber to do this, to craft your like first rings. I would say like 10 to 15 early on just to see what you get. Or you could just craft like one ring at a time and just keep saves coming, but you might be doing this for a while. So you just go to create bond rings. These are newer, em newer emblems, so I haven't created that many, but you can create one, you can create 10. Now the bond fragments are also useful for something else. And this is as you hit like chapter, I think six, like five to six, you want to go to the arena. And what you can do is you can use your bond fragments to unlock passives. Now each unit can only equip two passives, uh, but some of the early engage rings are really useful to have, like their passives are. And also keep in mind, um, in chapter, this is a minor spoiler, so if you don't want to hear the spoiler, skip ahead like 10 seconds. Uh, but you lose all of your starting engage rings for a few chapters in chapter 11. So you want to unlock those. Some of them have like strength plus two and some other abilities. But so you come here and let's say you want to unlock some abilities, right? So let's go to Chloe. So I could get her defense plus two. I could get her axe power. I could get a reposition. Now she doesn't use axes, but you can see how some of these are useful. I could get a unit HP plus seven and all it costs me is like 400 bond fragments to go from level zero to level five so that you can get skill inheritance. So like, let's say I want to put it at like HP plus five, or HP plus five, HP plus seven on her. I'm used to fire emblem three houses where it's HP plus five. So, all right, so we unlock this, the fight. And you can do this early game too. So this is a good use of your bond fragments to get some early passives. And the passives do require SP. SP is gained from fighting, like from being in battle and performing actions. But you can get enough SP to unlock some of the stat boosters. So it's very, I would say it's pretty important to do this. All right, so now I can get HP plus seven or quality time. You have to get the thing to level 5 though, so you can inherit the skills. So after you do this in the arena, you go back to the ring chamber. Then I can go equip HP plus 7. Now HP plus 7 actually is really good. It lets you tank more. Okay, so let's go to... You have to select the one you're actually on. You can see how much SP she has. So... There's HP plus seven, there's quality time. Now, this doesn't, so it says here, this does not stack. So like, if you have Corinne on Chloe, and then you equip quality time, it's redundant. Like it won't trigger twice, it'll just trigger once. But HP plus seven, I can equip, so. So we can inherit this. And then to equip it, it's like a three step process. To equip it, you just go to inventory, go to the units, manage skills, and then now I can change hit plus 10 or speed plus two for HP plus seven. Now, I don't know that I would run this. I could run this on certain maps. Chloe is actually a really good unit. She can kind of tank pretty well. So I'd probably get rid of hit plus 10 if I needed tanking, but I just did this for an example. So that's the fourth tip. So craft your, your early rings, and then after that, like mid-game, you want to get some useful passives using SP and Bond Fragments. Okay, and then the fifth tip, and this one's a little bit overpowered. You can perform every activity in the Somnial after every battle. So if you do an auxiliary battle, if you do a main mission, if you do a paralogue, after that battle, you can... A like do the arena for XP, you can do uh, ring polishing, you can collect items, you can do fishing, you can pet Sami, you can do literally every single activity in the Somnial. 
So right now I've just recently done every activity, but that's huge upside, especially once you get the Wyvern mini game, because that just gives you resources. Like you just get money from doing it. You can just sell the stuff that you get from it, but you get crafting resources, you can get fruit. So after every single mission, so it's really useful to know that. You might be thinking it's mainline chapters only. It includes side battles and paralogs. So it's pretty useful to know that. Now it does take some time to do all that stuff, to collect all the items, to do all the mini games. So it's up to you if you want to do that. But if you're doing a maddening run and you're having a hard time, that can help. Uh, sorry, all right, for the sixth bonus tip, I'm just gonna give you like a recommendation of units to invest in after having gone through I'm um, up to chapter 16, so I kind of know which units fell off <laughs> based on what they do. So units you probably want to avoid investing in. I don't know how good Gene is, but I have a feeling he's bad. Let's see what Expertise does. He has this, but maybe maybe he's okay. I haven't used him, so I don't really have an opinion on him. Uh, Clan, he's okay. I don't know that he's that good he kind of he, he might fall off i i stopped using him at a certain point because they handed me better mages so he, he might be okay uh bucheron he might be okay vander i would avoid investing in completely uh yunaka you could probably invest in her if you want amber you could probably invest in him luis is good he's a tank you could invest in him eddie she can deal okay damage, but she kind of falls off hard. And in Maddening, she gets one-shot by a lot of enemies. So I would avoid investing in her. Fram, you might be able to invest in her. She might be like a C or B tier. Diamant. Diamant is good, but he's basically a copy of you. So <laughs> he's not bad, but he's just like a duplicate of you, which I don't think you really need. Uh, Citrine, she's okay. Celine, she's okay. Lapis is okay. Zelkov is decent. Bune, I think that's his name. He's, he's okay. Anna, she might be good. Her passive's interesting, but she's she's a, she's actually not a thief. She's straight up like an axe fighter. <laughs> this is this was something that confused me. I'm like, why does she have axes and she's like picking locks? Uh, some of these are like later units. Pretty much all the later units are good. Like literally all the units you get from like chapter 12 and onward are very strong. Uh, all right, so here's one thing I will say for the sixth and final tip. Invest in Chloe. She's probably one of the best units in the game. And not because she can fly, too. Like, she has, she's just very powerful. She's your first flyer. And consistently, she's one of my best units. Her and Ivy are absolutely insane, but you get Ivy later on. And a lot of these are, are really good units. Seems like a lot of the female units are better than a lot of the male units on average. You, like, you just get them with really good stats and high level, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to compete with that, you know, if you're just handed a unit. This guy's really good. He's a Bonite, you know. He's a Cupid. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you find this useful. I'm going to be doing character guides, so I'm going to be forcing myself to run every single unit on Maddening mode, even if they are terrible and I'll come up with ways to make them good. Now with the min-maxing from passives, that's probably possible. And with like rings and passives, you should be able to make everyone at least viable. Now there's not that many there, slots to equip passives, there's only two. So you'd really want to identify what makes the most sense to unlock early on and then just go for it. Um, but that being said, thanks for watching this. You can drop a comment if you want. You can comment hat or cat. So yeah. Thanks for checking us out. Peace.